In the 1950s, eccentric inventor Adolf Grimmel moved to the Florida Keys to explore and photograph the fabled coral reefs, but instead he became fascinated with tropical fruit. For the next 40 years, Grimmel defied the odds and developed his two-acre property into what became known as the Grimmel Estate, an edible garden oasis on Big Pine Key. Following his death in 1997 and the destruction of Hurricane George the following year, the once famed beauty of the Grimmel Grove quickly became forgotten, and for the past 15 years this piece of Key's history has faded under the weight of neglect. But now a new organization sees the potential of this unique land and has set their sights on restoring the legendary Grimmel Grove. Everybody had an interest in the Grimmel estate because of, of what he did. He sort of did the impossible and improbable. Uh, it, it was like con widely considered back then that you couldn't grow this stuff in the United States first, and it was widely considered that you couldn't grow it in the Keys. He, he was up on an upland rocky area. Uh, you gotta understand that the Florida Keys has the least amount of rainfall in all of Florida. But we get all of that rainfall like in two months, three months tops, you know, on a rainy cycle. And a lot of these plants are grown on alluvial plains or like old ancient river beds and in more loamy soils. Uh, we're on a rock with a high pH and the, the depth of the soil varies from inches to maybe a foot. Now what he did, this is hard limestone, rock. Uh, carved out, chipped out, took advantage of depressions and things like that, and, and collected water, enough water, and also he made uh, uh, planting holes, and then he made soil. So he was pretty self-sufficient and sustainable out there, and that alone was uh, pretty amazing. Some of the things that, that were there and some of the things are now, a lot of things are, are not identified because we don't have examples anywhere else in the country on, on a lot of those plants and that's what made it so rare and it's still rare there because I think we found uh, five or six we haven't identified yet. At one time, he had a cashew, the anthemoyas, the soursops, the uh, custard apple, the sugar apple, he was the only one that actually grew Dorians here. Uh, he had three different types of Dorian. He had black sapotes, persimmons, mobalos, the mangosteens. He had the only mangosteen grown in the United States at one time. He had uh, three different types of bananas, uh, cherry de Rio gans, garuchamas, patambas, serenum cherries, jabatacabas, national fruit of Brazil. He had macadamias. He had fruit from Thailand that no one knew how he got it. He had melee apples, balimbis, carambolas, even had a carambola that he created and was called the, uh, the Grimmel. He had his own little uh, Grimmel uh, carambola. The Fairchild's Tropical uh, Garden uh, used to run tours from their garden clubs and things like that down to Grimmel State because it was once again tropical. It was the only true tropical fruit growing area in the United States. The buses from the organizations used to come down and park here and would go in when things would be blossoming and, and uh, he'd allow them to pick this, pick that, and they'd be in there for a couple hours at a time all the way from Miami Homestead. I see this, I could cry. I could cry to let this go this far. There must be some organization, and here you are, finally. So what did it look like when it was completely cleared? Did you, anything that grew in there, it, it, it bared fruit. It, it, anything. It, it bared fruit or getting ready. Pineapples. Oh, pine. he used to set them out on the road here when he couldn't get rid of enough of them. I first heard about the Grimmel Grove while I was working for the Department of Children and Families. With their support, I started a volunteer program to create community gardens for low-income families. 
During that time, a colleague of mine told me about the Grimmel Grove. When I first stepped foot on the property, it was a little overwhelming. At the same time, I could envision what it once was and the potential it has. So I began to visit the property in my free time, cleaning, clearing, rehabilitating the property. When I realized the significance of the Grimmel Grove, I involved my organization, the Growing Hope Initiative. Uh, it's this beautiful piece of property. It needs some work, but I think that you know, the notion of, of, of re-empowering people to reclaim their food system and the notions of food justice and the education that comes along with it and the ideas of organic farming and spreading that into people's backyards and really this is a very American idea of self-sufficiency that is both good for the planet and really good for the people and hopefully it'll spread and become you know the wave of, of the future and I think that that is the goal of this piece of property. Our plans are to create an edible community park, a farm, and an educational center for lifelong learning opportunities. With the support of the county, the Growing Hope Initiative would like to work with local businesses, schools, and other stakeholders to save the Grimmel Grove. The Extension Service can help the Grimmel Grove project through uh, the program that I run, the Environmental Horticulture Agent to have a location like Grimmel Grove in the Lower Keys could be a good educational uh, spot for us to uh, provide these uh, resources to our community. We focus on trying to get as much local as possible. We don't have a lot, um, too much available to us in the Florida Keys, so we work with the farms in Homestead, which is our closest farmland. We've just opened an organic market because there was a lack of anywhere to buy real healthy food. Now I'm truly inspired to come up here and see this, this land here and to, see, to hear what it used to be um, and what it could be again. To actually have the access and to show what, what we can grow here in the Keys. Yeah, the, the Grimmel Estate uh, is, is definitely, you know, deserves to be rehabilitated. Uh, that heritage needs to be preserved for generations, absolutely.